I've wanted to go to Japan for a long time now because I'm a big fan of Japanese media and culture, but there has been a little bit of anxiety surrounding that. Like in my teens, I was a weeaboo, which means that I was obsessed with Japan and anime to the point where it was unhealthy and very socially awkward. And I still like Japan and Japanese stuff, but what if I go to Japan and it kind of sucks? So I figured once I get over to Japan, that will be it. Either I reinvigorate myself back into my teenage weeb me, or I come back a jaded bitter man who now hates anime. And by the end of last year, I finally figured it was time to challenge myself, explore an entirely different side of the world, and get out and get new experiences, because I can afford a plane ticket now. Once you're in Tokyo, everything is so overwhelming, all the colors and all the sounds and all the people. And for my first day in Japan, I went to sleep because airplanes are terrible. So I wake up at around 8 p.m. and I'm still in Japan, and I head out into the night because I want to talk to people. So I went to a bar and hung out with some elderly Japanese men, and it was pretty interesting. In that environment, I never felt left out for being a foreigner. In fact, people were ensuring that I had a good time. Strangers would come up and talk to me, and one person did not talk to me, but bought me a plate of garlic fries for some reason. But thank you. I like garlic fries. Later on in the night, a woman walked in. One man said something to her and pointed at me. And then that woman went up to me and laughed in my face. And okay, that was pretty weird, but all in all, pretty forgivable. Because I am a single white guy hanging out with a bunch of elderly Japanese men. So yes, it's true. I'm an exotic creature. I managed to sleep a bit more and spent the morning just walking around and exploring places. I went to the suburbs where normal people live as usual, and I was walking around holding back tears about to cry at how beautiful everything was, particularly because it reminded me so much of the art of the Japanese artists that I like. And here I was, I was really there in that artwork, and it was a really strange moment where all this art you had admired turned out to really exist. It truly was a suburb. Basically, one of my favorite things to do when I travel is to not really go to all the touristy places, but to sort of just wander around without a direction. I love to see the tiny quirks that you might see in everyday life in an entirely different place. This is the kind of stuff that you sort of find to be really exciting when otherwise all you do is sit at home. Japanese people are for the most part very fashionable. Just by going to the subway, you will find all kinds of alternative fashion, but there still is a very clear social norm. It inspired me to try and be a bit more fashionable. I'm not very fashionable, and I came here from Scandinavian winter, so my pale skin already makes me look like I'm the walking dead. So the very least I can do is put on a nice sweater. The convenience store, or konbini as they call it, is a surprisingly weird thing. It shapes the food culture around Tokyo. I heard about one guy who had an apartment here, and he did not own a fridge. He only had a microwave, and that was it. It would be crazy anywhere else, but in Tokyo that works out just fine, because there are so many vending machines everywhere, and convenience stores that are so full of healthy, cheap food that you could live off that and be fine. I don't dislike cooking or fridges, but if there is an option to both save time and live as a man-child, then I see the appeal. Konbini is possibly my favorite word ever. It's weirdly beautiful. If you told me let's go to a convenience store, I can't imagine a more terrible shopping experience. But if you told me let's head to the Konbini, I am ready to run down there and gulf down any kind of terrible days old 7-Eleven hot dog I can find. The only problem I had with Konbinis in Japan would be that I kept buying stuff, but the cashier would often say I did not have the right amount of money. I was often confused, like, is there some kind of secret tax I don't know about? And much later, I would find out I had been confusing 5 yen coins for 50 yen coins. When you are a foreigner in Japan, you don't want to be that one foreigner guy who screws everything up. So it can be a very liberating moment when you realize, this has been my identity all along. Tokyo is such a big city that you can essentially find every kind of absurd niche possible. With that amount of people concentrated in a small place, you're bound to strike a chord with enough people to somehow stay in business. It's a part of the magic of Tokyo that makes you feel like anything is possible. It's not the kind of Hollywood magic where you could move here and become an actor, but the kind of magic where, yes, you could move here and become a gothic lolita. For example, I don't know if a place like Akihabara could exist outside of Tokyo. 
It's practically a 24-7 anime convention, so it's a great place for weebs to go and do their main hobby, which is making fun of other weebs. Added to that, there's arcade machines all around Tokyo, and they are great places to go and win nothing. Finally, it was time to leave, and I did wish I'd spend more time talking to people. But by the end of the trip, the news about the coronavirus was starting to come up, and maybe next time. So I got back home, and remember how I said I would either return a weeb or become jaded? Well, once I was home, I actually felt the same way I did before. I mean, I did like Japan, and I liked the trip, but can I really say that based on my trip? Maybe I have to go there again and travel around more. Maybe I have to stay and live in Japan to see if I truly can utter the words, I like Japan. And after a while, I couldn't help but think, man, I am way too hard on myself. Why do I treat whether I like something or not as if it's a flaw in my character? I guess in a way I wanted to fall into either loving or hating it because I just wanted to shape my ego into a box and have it fit in somewhere. And it made me reevaluate things a bit more. What is this gap between myself and my ego? Like, why do I find it so easy to be honest with myself when I do some things, and really difficult when I do other things? For example, I find it really easy to make videos, and maybe part of that is that I don't have any dreams of becoming a good YouTuber. But when it comes to drawing, I have so many ideas of what a kind of artist I could be that I ironically end up holding myself back. For a long time, I've had the idea that if I draw enough inspiration from a wide variety of sources, then over time I would find myself, and I think in a way that isn't wrong at all. There's so many different sides to us, and it's good to take a lot of influence from other people so we can build on that and grow. And yet, I too often find myself chasing after so many different ideas of what it could be and what it could make instead of just using drawing to unravel myself. I'm not sure if I even have the answer to any of this yet, but at this point I am willing to believe that if I want to be the best version of myself, then I have to keep failing at it. Because I think for anyone, being yourself would be worth it, and if that means making or saying the wrong things, then that's not too bad of a price to pay. So after this reevaluation, I could take a step back and I could look at all of this and I could say, Yeah, it was a fun trip. Okay, bye everybody, bye! <laughs>